we're going to have a look at um, the next part, which is to look at a special probability density function. Um, that's called the normal probability density function. It's what you will have seen in the past. It's basically the bell-shaped curve. And it's really commonly used because it crops up all the time in, in real maths. Um, so the first three dot points that you can see up on the screen there give three examples that you could use a normal distribution to model. Or another way to think about it is that if you were to collect the data, it would come out in that shape. Okay, so we've got population, um, you know, physical attributes of a population, so people's heights, their weights, their arm length, those sorts of things. Uh, we could imagine that it would make sense that the majority of the population have their, you know, have a uh, height somewhere in the middle. Okay, we're at, at a mean value. And then as you get further away from the mean either way, the amount of people that are going to have that is going to drop. And it's going to drop pretty evenly below the mean and above the mean. You're going to have people who are shorter and people who are taller. And as you get further and down and get people who are quite a lot shorter or people who are quite a lot taller, there's going to be less and less. And it's going to follow some sort of curve like this, a bell-shaped curve. Could be the mass of fruit from an orchard. Um, it could be a scores of tests taken by a large population. I'd perhaps suggest that that's more likely to have a different to a, um, a different set of results. Maybe it depends on what sort of test it was. But the idea is we're looking at this bell-shaped curve, but we're calling it a probability density function. Still, still has to have that area of one underneath. So under here, we have to have the area of one, okay? And it's all got to be positive. If we were to zoom in forever, if we look at this little section here, you can see that it's been drawn not to actually meet that point because in fact, the function, which we'll have a look at in a second, maps this as being all the way out to uh, negative infinity at this end and infinity at that end which ultimately means there is a chance of getting values that are ridiculously a long way away from the mean, but that is getting, you know, the chance of getting very, very small to the point of being negligible, but they are, I mean, we can calculate them. All right, so we're gonna have a look. There's the, if we have a look here, this is straight from the textbook, you can see this function and it's pretty horrible looking. You don't have to don't really have to use this for much. You use part of it, but that's in another section that we'll come to. But really, we don't have to use it. It is given to you on the formula sheet. I'm not entirely sure why they do, but um, it is there. It maps that function, okay? What's important, though, is seeing what some of the things that are in it, all right? So pi is in it, which is interesting, but it's a constant, all right? So it's a number. Um, E is in it, another constant. The other things that are in it is this value here, the standard deviation. We have over here, the mean. Um, this value X, that's our X like we would normally have in a function, you know, the, the varying sort of uh, part to it. So for a particular situation, you're going to have a mean and a standard deviation. So these values here, well, they will be plugged in. And the part that is varying is this, this X like it normally does. Okay, and it's, it's um, mapped from negative infinity all the way up to infinity. Now, what um, we do is we call that the, uh, the function for the normal curve. You will see this notation at times, and we'll, we'll use that as time goes on even more regularly. Um, and that is, we've got the capital X we use, capital X for the um, a, a variable. Okay, so it's a um, variable that is um, from a statistic. Okay, we get this little symbol here. Okay, that symbol, if we have a look at what he says over here, you, re you read that as is distributed as. Okay, so we're going to imagine that our variable 
is distributed as the n means a normal, a normal distribution. Okay, and then in brackets we put the mean and we put the variance. Now we sort of we don't use we use the the standard deviation more regularly in calculations, but when we write it, we write it as the variance, which just means that we're doing the square of the standard deviation. Okay, so just be aware of that. We won't see that today, but we will use it, we'll use it later. Um, so the sort of stuff that's important, we've already talked about this, but, um, well, not all of it. These dot points, one is that it's symmetrical. Okay, we can see that in the shape. It dips away to the, the negative direction in the same way as it dips away in the positive direction. Okay, and it's symmetrical about this line here and that line is the mean. That's where the mean is going to be. Okay, this is a normal distribution. We um, then have these two dot points, which are really the same. It's a probability density function. It is positive the whole time. It's above the x-axis. Okay, and if we were to find the integral from minus infinity up to infinity of this function, then the answer is equal to 1. You are not going to have to find the integral of this thing. Okay, just take it as gospel. That is the answer. Um, this this uh, last dot point is probably quite important to consider, and that is that the more times that you take data, the more samples of data that you take, the more it's likely um, that... Uh, so more scores are... yeah. No, that's, sorry, I'll take that back. I thought I was going to say something else, but it's not. It, it, they're just saying here that um, we're going to get more of our scores closer to the mean. I think we've already talked about a lot of that before. Obviously, more of the, uh, you know, let's say it's the height of females uh, in Australia or something. There's going to be more of them in this little sort of area close to the mean than there are out here in these extremes, which is fairly obvious, and that's your bell-shaped curve. Um, a couple of other things that are important, and we're not gonna, we don't have to do it. The textbook shows you the steps through. You can look at it and take it on if you want to. But if you were to use this function and find the first derivative of it and use that to find any stationary points, and if you took the second derivative of it and use that to find inflection points, they actually come out really nice. Now, you're not going to be asked to, to do that, but what you find is if you do the first derivative and find stationary points, the stationary point you find comes out to be mu, the mean. Okay, and that's sort of fairly obvious. That's where it turns. The other points, though, that are interesting is that there are two points of inflection. It's concave down, changes to concave up there, concave up there. Those points of inflection come from the second derivative, but they work out to be at the mean take away a standard deviation and the mean add a standard deviation. Okay, so they're sort of geometrically nice points on the curve as well as being you know, important for what we use them for. So what are we gonna do with it? What we're gonna do is try and solve some problems. The first set of problems are really quite straightforward and we just use the information that we see on this little, um, this little diagram here, okay? What we've been doing in the previous stuff with the probability density functions was to say, what's the chance of value being between one value and another value? Well, this is just another density function, probability density function. We can do the same thing. But we're going to use this uses particular points. This part uses particular points on the curve. It says, well, if we were from the mean out to, say, one standard deviation above the mean, then the probability of getting a value that sits in that space is going to be 34.13, okay? What does that really mean? It means for this space that the integral from, um, oops, I can't draw on that very easily, mu to mu plus, from there to there, um, I was going to write, f of x for that function dx, that must be equal to 0 0.3413. In fact, it keeps going. Okay, it's the same math. It's no different, 
But this table, um, I'm just gonna rub that out, it's quite to read. Um, this not table, this diagram gives you the answers for specific areas, but only specific areas. Okay, so if you wanted to go from one standard deviation above me, uh, above the mean, and to two standard deviation above the mean, so mean plus two standard deviations, then the amount in that space is 13.59%. Okay, round up, but that's what it is. Okay, if you wanted to go from here all the way to here, so these two points, then the area is going to be 34.13 plus 13.59. Okay, and you can just you can sort of just put them in there. What's really in, it's sort of important to notice um, is that after you get to say three standard deviations above and three standard deviations below, there really is not very much area under this curve left. The chances of being three standard deviations away from the mean, either below or above, are really, really small. Okay, you can see this dot point here tells us that more than 95% of the values are between two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above. So from here, around there, that area in there is more than 95%. Okay, and so the chances of getting a value in this space outside, so either of those two sides, are less than 5%. And then if you go right out to three standard deviations away, you're looking at sort of less than less than half a percent of chance. Okay, so what we can use that too is a bit of a guide to say, well, if we get a value that's five standard deviations above a mean, we're going to say, well, this is either extremely rare or something weird is going on. Okay, and we can use that statistically to help us. So the first part, um, well, part C, I think this is, um, just uses those values that are going to be equal to standard deviations um, away from the mean. So let's just go through this example really quickly, um, and then I'm going to do another video and say, well, okay, hang on, that's all very well, but really in real life, are we going to always just want to work in these particular values? We want to work out values around, and we can use the calculator to give us results quickly. So this is about chest measurements of 18-year-old male footballers. Um, which is a bit of a strange question really. Um, but what we've got is we've got some information that says the mean was 95 centimeters and the standard deviation was eight centimeters. That information was gained somehow. It was by collecting a whole heap of data and getting those averages and working it out. Don't know, but that's um, that was collected somehow. We know that. So then it says, find the percentage of footballers with chest measurements that are between 95 and 103. Those numbers have been picked deliberately because 95 is the mean, and 103 is eight more than 95. The standard deviation is eight. So really, what they've done there in this question is said, um, between the mu is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to mu plus the standard deviation. Now, what's, um, uh, what, what's been done deliberately is to pick those because then all you need to do is go back to this and say, well, it's this space here that we're interested in. So it's 34.13%, okay? Um, so you can see our answer given here that's about 34.13%. All we're doing is reading it straight off. They've drawn it onto here. What's really important though, just looking at how they've drawn it, okay? And you, you, sometimes you'll be asked to draw a sketch of it. Do not get too hung up about how well you draw your curve. doesn't matter, just draw it rough. But notice that they've put values on the bottom. Now those values relate to this question and this question only, or this, this scenario. 95 is our mean. And because one standard deviation more is eight more, then we're gonna have 103, then another eight, 111, and from 95 down by eight, 87, down by eight, 79, et cetera. So we can put different values depending on the situation. It's still a bell-shaped curve, and it still has the same uh, percentage areas. All right, the 
Um, second question says, from a group of 200 18 year old footballers, how many would you expect to be 87 to 111? So 87 to 111, if we have a look at this diagram, they've drawn it for us. 87 is one standard deviation below, 100 and 111 is two above. So they've added up these three areas together to get 81.85. The question does say, if there was 200 of them, how many would you expect? Well, we'd say 81.85% of 200 okay and so that's approximately equal to 164 when we're answering these questions we should try and think about what the situation is we can't have a decimal of a footballer okay so we would we would round that to a whole number okay last question says find the value of k such that approximately 16 percent of chest measurements are below k centimeters Okay, so if we go down to here, what we're really doing is looking at our bell-shaped curve and saying, we need to find the area where we've got about 16% in there. Now that's been picked deliberately, okay, because if we go back to our original one here, if we look at that, that 13.59 plus 2.15 plus 0.13 approximately equals 16%. So what, what they've done is just said, okay, well, that means that this K here must be a standard deviation below the mean, or it must be at that, um, that point. So it's 95 to K is 87. Quite a contrived question, deliberately designed that you can just read them off. Okay, so um, that's really the sorts of things. That's what we need to do to answer the questions from... Um, Oh, I think this is 8C or 7C, I can't remember now. Um, but I put the questions uh, up onto sector and on hit onto team so you can see which ones to have a go at. I'll do another video in a sec which uses a calculator to solve it when we get a more realistic question, um, which is not going to be perfect amounts of standard deviations away.